Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you're new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back you sexy beast. That's what you get for subscribing by the way, free compliments at the start of these videos. Now it's this video's focus to actually dive in for the new player experience and answer the questions that I've seen asked over and over again in my comments and really help give you new players a leg up in this world and help kind of, I guess, ease the burden of unknowing when it comes to a new MMORPG. New World is different in some ways. You're gonna find it's pretty easy to jump into the game, but I always find a couple things that help me out as a player. So if you're looking to get started into New World ahead of the Brimstone Sands update this fall, well, that's what I actually hope you find with this guide. There's a lot to cover, but I'm gonna segment this video into different chapters so you can take it at your own pace and skip whatever really doesn't apply to you or your skill level. Just note, I'll also be releasing updated controller guides coming real soon that are going to take advantage of all the updates and all the skills that are being added to this game. And at the time of this recording, if this game does not actually have native controller support, so the Steam support actually is quite good, but I'm going to continue to advocate for more native controller support just because that's just how I am. You don't have to agree with it, trust me. Uh, many people don't, but I find it very enjoyable to actually play this game on a controller. If you're interested, I do have that guide here on this channel. Just check the channel playhead, uh, the, you know, the main page, etc., for my guides section, and you'll be able to jump into anything that I've already made about this game. Now, New World is a top-notch experience, especially with the new player experience that's coming. But as a veteran player myself, you'll actually be able to experience it as well. So if you're on the fence about starting today, I'd honestly encourage you to check it out now. And then that way, when everything changes, you can check it out again and get a good feel for everything that the devs are putting into this game. I'll leave it up to you for that. But at the end of the day, if you have any questions as well, and this video doesn't answer them, sound off below, join us in Discord or join us on Fridays over on Twitch, where we do a live Q&A and community game night. Everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a subscriber. You don't have to be a supporter. Uh, you know, just watching these videos, liking these videos, showing them on streams is absolutely support enough. So welcome to the channel, guys. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, I want to tackle what type of content that you should really focus in on, especially early in the game. Now, first and foremost, I want you to repeat after me over and over again until you believe this. Endgame begins at level one in New World. And this is because of a player-driven economy. Everything you do has value, no matter what you do in the game. I know other MMOs might have trained you that it's all about the rush to level cap, which at the time of this recording is level 60. I'm here to tell you, you can have the best experience possible if you understand the end game begins at level one. But let's talk about the content that you can do because there is content that opens up at level 60, but we're gonna focus in on the content that you can be doing right now. Now, first and foremost, once you enter into the game world, uh, you're gonna eventually reach a point where it's gonna have you choose a faction. Uh, there are three player factions in this game. You have the Covenant, the Syndicate, and the Marauders, green, purple, and yellow are the different colors. And your company, if you wanna be a part of a company, for example, we are purple, we are syndicate. Uh, if you wanna be in our company, you have to pick syndicate to do so. But overall, we can still play together regardless of what faction you choose. This really only matters more in open world PVP and zone control. And if you're not interested in that style of content, don't worry, it's not gonna really apply to you all that much. But you're gonna to wanna to pick one and it's gonna open up essentially some bonuses. You'll find a faction vendor each uh, in each and every town uh, they're going to allow you to do any number of quests that you want to do overall but i would actually encourage you you get three bonus quests a day that basically double the experience you get if you actually do the pvp ones you're going to get even more faction tokens experience and more i would highly encourage you to at least be doing that because as you progress you'll actually rank up uh, within your faction and open up even more rewards for you to join and once you get to the end game you'll be able to purchase various gypsum orbs and things like that which will help with your end game progression if you're ever curious about your progression you can always uh, check out your journal and i would say uh, make sure you focus in on your skill progression piece of these things uh, that is one key aspect the other thing you want to focus in on is your main story you'll see main story with this special icon especially on the map itself and this is going to move you through the game and the world. And this is going to feed you with various different rewards. If you're playing in October with the new update, this is going to be more streamlined than, than I can even express to you just how good it is. But overall, you want to look for this symbol, especially on the map itself. And that's going to direct you exactly where you need to go. 
So you follow the main story and then from there, you do your faction missions. Also, if we jump into the world a little bit more, we wanna make sure we're checking out the town boards. These are gonna have different missions that pop up. I highly encourage you always to look for the explorers needed as a way of just kind of exploring the game's world. You can always grab additional things like deliver 15 fishing bait. I already have that. What this actually gives me the ability to do now, and this is kind of like my own personal shopping list. Whenever I do things like that, it will add a nice little symbol to items, the nice little green item itself. And that's gonna tell me if it's something worthwhile of turning in personally for a town board or selling on the market. And we'll talk about how you can make money in this game easier uh, later on in this video itself. So note that even if you grab things on the town board that you don't intend to turn in, uh, alchemist needed, uh, fisher folk needed, uh, this is gonna be a great way of tracking things that are going to have value on the markets because sometimes people just wanna purchase this and get the experience bonus for the town boards. But always just grab everything you see. Never never sleep on anything like this because there, there's no guarantee they'll always be up. And then that way you can have something to do alongside your uh, MSQ, alongside your faction missions, and also your side quests. Again, pulling yourself into the journal, finding your side stories, pinning, going on the map, and knocking these things out are a great way to feed yourself with experience, coin, and so much more. But it doesn't end there. If we pull up our map, as you discover the various different dungeons on the map, you can actually go into find group and see who's got various different content listed that is available for you. Uh, you can also create a lobby, that way you can find a group. So this is gonna be hugely helpful for doing various content in the game, the expeditions and so much more. There are open world dungeons and we'll actually talk about that in the next section about how you level up your weapon mastery. But beyond that, you also have various things called portals. Uh, you can see those listed here on the map in the little reds that pop up. Personally speaking, I would recommend teaming up with a group to knock these things out uh, as it is a fast and easy way to both get experience and have a lot of fun. Uh, we like to do portal runs, especially with a lot of different level ranges of, of players. So that is very helpful. Also, it does not hurt to team up with high level players. And I also love teaming up with low level players because as I run the quests and the content with them, I get fed with all kinds of chests reward and so much more. So never feel bad about wanting to team up with anybody at any level range. The game does not punish you for it. So that's kind of the content that I'd have you focus in on. Uh, you can also jump into crafting and gathering. I actually really enjoy uh, the gathering and refining aspect because that's going to feed you experience as well. But if you're not into that, don't make me tell you that's optimal you know like because i think it's something that's very enjoyable in this game but if you that's something that's not for you don't stress yourself out so i've been asked what are the best spots for early weapon mastery experience and when it comes down to this there's a couple things i'd point you to obviously harder enemies uh, tend to reward better weapon experience hitting actually level 60 will tend to actually reward better weapon experience as well but overall if i just pull up the map i like to come to a couple of different spots like your open world dungeons honestly are the best and you can team up with them uh, with friends or even do them solo now if you come out here uh, i'm actually right now in uh, monarch's bluff and you go down to the uh, dead man's cove if you use the dead man's shrine as a teleport point it's actually pretty easy to get here there's many others like if we actually go look over here at Re uh, restless shore you can come out to these various different outposts to go and farm up different enemies there's a lot of ranges of different things you can be doing in that regards so don't think of this as the be all end all but i like this one personally because i like how it is out here in monarch's bluff it's very beautiful etc but just using the weapons that you have yourself now if i jump into my weapon master you'll see even still as a veteran player i don't have everything currently capped i am working on getting everything capped right now i'm focusing here on the void gauntlet and my healing build as i got the life staff at level 20 in this case so what i like to do is come out here and on the way to dead man's cove you're going to find that these enemies out here are very easily to solo but it's still worthwhile like any kind of experience that you can get to be able to grab you can see here just i mean it's not like the best but still it adds up because these guys are very easily killable and i think that's probably bad english and grammar all around but that's why you're here that's <laughs> that's how it works in this game and when it comes down to it the elite stronghold is a little bit past here you'll see a bunch of different you know maybe even harder enemies spawn but you can come out here and i would recommend actually setting up a camp sometimes there's already a camp that is available but if i go ahead and place my camp down here I can go ahead and have my uh, section ready to rock and roll and with my my camp this is going to keep me alive and uh, <laughs> sustainable you'll find that sometimes people come in here and clear out the enemies as well which gives you the opportunity to grab various different chests but when the enemies spawn you'll get a decent amount of experience 
uh, for just killing them out here in and of itself we can see here they're level 25 so this is actually kind of really good for your early game but these still can present a challenge to a level 60 player as well but it's really good weapon experience as you can see here it's almost 80 points uh at this uh, time of recording and we'll see if that ends up getting adjusted you can always of course team up with others as they jump in and you'll share a little bit of that experience so dead man's cove is a really good uh, place i would recommend also teaming up with other players as you see them running around so that way you don't miss out on getting enough damage on the enemies to be able to farm them now once you do get a weapon to level uh, 20 i almost said 60 uh, don't forget about your epic weapon and armor quest this will help give you some really cool stuff so just note that there's still more to do once you hit level 20. If you've made it this far into this video and you feel like I earned it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more of my new world content. I also have a podcast that we record live over on Ginger Prime. You can also just subscribe to the MP3 version wherever podcasts are found. And if you guys want to be a part of the community, check out the links in the description for the Discord and all of this stuff that you see here at the podcast and so much more. All right, so what should you actually invest your currency into? What should you take your gold and actually spend it on in this game? especially as you level and step into the world. And first and foremost, yourself. And I would say you want to invest in tools, especially from the gathering side of things. There is so much to gather on your adventures in this game. And the best way to gather is having the best speed and perks. So just as you work your way through, don't be afraid to spend money on a new tool. Now, tools are all going to be within a certain level range. So don't go break the bank right away on a Orca Calcum you know, harvesting sickle. You won't be able to equip that. But note that this is going to save you all kinds of time. Uh, and time is important. It's going to make your experience all the better for it. And personally speaking, I really love the harvesting yield and the outcry where I get a boost of haste, my movement speed, every time I gather. It just makes it more fun to get around the world. Now, it doesn't really stop just with your tools. I would also highly encourage you to make sure you're looking into your bag space. This is going to make your journeys out into the world all the easier to spend your time because then you don't have to return so much to like a, a home base. But personally speaking, this also kind of ties perfectly right in with your home now i have three homes you can have three different houses in the game but i wouldn't recommend that as a goal starting out find a zone that you really enjoy and focus in on the town board faction missions and things like that within there and then purchase yourself a house you can actually recall to your house at any point you get a recall point to your end and that has a uh, cooldown of 30 minutes but if you have a house you can recall pretty much any time and you can spend a zoth to actually reset that town return so ultimately you have unlimited returns which is just going to make your questing so much easier so you can see here i can recall the house or i can just <laughs> enter into my housing menu now i don't decorate houses it's not my skill set but it's still a value and i could put chests in this house to increase my my storage capacity for that city as well so there's a lot of value in that and as you rank up in any different zone you're going to get various different buffs that you have so check your territory standing i tend to focus in on obviously see in this case everfall uh, you can purchase different sizing houses at different ranks within everfall but at the start of it i would just go for the most the easiest house available because you can get that recall point and then that with an n you can actually be just jumping all around the world pretty quickly and then as you uh, make more money investing in housing in this game is actually very very valuable to you as a player because it opens up the ability to have various trophies and so much more that are on uh, on display and this is going to help with your gathering and just overall money generation so uh it is kind of this really good investment into you yourself as a player so we talked about bags houses uh chests tools so invest in yourself now gear could be honestly i would just grab whatever gear you get and not stress about it so much um, when it comes down to this like you can salvage this stuff and i think that's really kind of now we should really talk about actually how you make money in this game uh, because this is going to be something valuable to you first and foremost if you find a piece of gear that is just better stats for you as you level equip it like i wouldn't stress about being efficient in your stats just kind of play around with the weapons and, and that you get available to you um when it comes back down to the weapon mastery pick a weapon and, and take it all the way you're going to have a lot of value in having a fully fledged out set of skills that's just going to make your experience much more easier and i probably should have mentioned this then because now we're talking about uh, making money but when you focus in on pick skills first that's going to give you more damage output rather than perks ultimately uh, that way you at least you have three skills on your bar to use uh, to play around with but when it comes to buying and selling personally i don't think you're going to actually get a lot of money for gear because it's 
kind of weird because you're going to get fed with a lot of gear as you play. However, you're going to get those materials. I would always take a look at the buy orders, which are essentially listed here, meaning I could sell this right now for 21, uh, you know, coins, you know, or 21 cents or something like that. You can also hit sell and see exactly what they're selling for. If this is double or triple what people are paying for it, then I'll go ahead and list it right here. But if somebody wants to buy it for 21, uh, then I can go ahead and feel like I can sell it to them for that. And this is just a great way of making a little extra coin really quickly. So just take a look at buy orders. This also kind of gives you your own personalized quest list. So as you know, Greenwood goes up in price, maybe you wanna go farm up some trees and, and be able to capitalize on what people are willing to pay for and willing to buy and sell. You can get all kinds of different things. So you wanna kind of check prices. And this kind of ties back into exactly what I was talking about with the various different items that show from the town boards and you'll see the symbols on the items themselves as you have them so you know what is actually got a good value and that's something you can usually check on pretty easily as for example this is a mission item that you can turn in you could see strong regeneration potion people are willing to buy it for a dollar and if you go to look to sell it looks like right now you could sell them for 10 now at the time of this recording so just note that is just one option as well now, while all markets are gonna be supply and demand driven, I do like to come out here to Everfall and into the Stolen Shores. This is a great little area and you find these herbs that have the chance to drop garlic. Now, that one obviously didn't, but you can run around and find any and all the various different herbs to be able to gather up some garlic, which has a huge value. I'm just gonna give you that tip. Obviously, saying garlic is gonna probably drive a lot of people here, making it harder to find uh, the herbs and or at the same time, driving the price of garlic down as more garlic hits the market. So just note, uh, finding various things within the buy orders is gonna tell you where a lot of value is. And then finding little farms that just generate a lot of different wealth for you uh, is going to be valuable. There's a lot of herbs around this game. Don't sleep on just even the simple gathering things and you'll be just fine and ready to rock and roll. Now, the other thing I'd recommend if you go onto these various farms, just don't focus on one thing. You can always farm up various different materials, meats, skins, and so much more. So you end up making the most value out of your time on any particular farming run. This applies to like, I mean, you know, like ores, uh, trees, etc. You can end up, and that's why investing in your bags ends up being so critical is that you can end up uh, gathering a bunch of different stuff while you're farming for specific items as well. Because even with hyssop, even with the things that you gather, you're still making kind of coin per each and every run as well. And again, all this makes it absolutely valuable to have a house. That way you can be able to gather, return, sell your wares, jump back out and farm any town boards, missions and stories within a particular zone and really capitalize on saving yourself a lot of time and energy, especially with the reduction in travel cost and so much more. And finally, before we wrap up this video on the gear, should you equip it? If it gives you a little bit of value, go for it. But if you actually hold control and C, it opens up quick salvage. Now, my general rule is right now, anything green and blue, because I'm level 60, uh, gets the ax. I'm not really worried about it um, and what I need it to do. This ends up acting as a great and easy way to generate myself uh, various materials. And you have the option to get a perfect salvage out of it. That's a new system that was introduced. It's going to introduce uh, get, feed you with plenty of coin and repair materials as well. And so again, that is what I focus in on. As your rarities are available, note that you're gonna have kind of different, maybe you're gonna keep all the greens up to a point and then eventually you can kind of salvage those and keep your inventory nice and clean. Uh, and this is gonna help obviously with your gathering and more. Now, once you do uh, get into the game, you'll be able to get three hidden stashes each and every day, which once you start getting this, it's gonna give you a nice flow of coin and even gypsum. So just note that you wanna jump in be able to do a little bit of gathering and farm these up as well as it's a great way to help with your progression and it's a great way of feeding yourself with plenty of materials and coin so with that guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you want another video youtube's got a couple right here on the page for you right now you can always check out the podcast again we record live on wednesdays or you can just listen to the audio mp3 wherever podcasts are consumed we're everywhere links all are in the description to help get you started there and with that guys i wish you all the best thank you for watching hopefully i'll see you in my next video but until then take care